Hey guys, welcome back to another data list lesson. And this lesson is an extension of my previous add and delete query. And in this one, we're gonna learn how to create the object query. So as you can see, we have here an uh, edit button. If the user click on edit button, the single row will be selected. User can even select multiple rows. And after the changing the value, and when the user click on the finish editing, it's gonna be updated on our table. So I'm going to be teaching you how you can actually create this kind of stuff. So with that being said, let's get rolling. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm going to be starting from where we left off in our previous tutorial. So let's go ahead and create our edit column. So select our data grid, click on this little icon, click add column, and we're going to use unbound column. Let's name this edit and the header text to edit. Let's add this. Now close that and go over to the edit column. Select our edit, go over to the column type and change that to button column. Let's click OK. Let me just resize this quick. Alright, let's debug this. So as you can see, we have here our buttons, but those buttons doesn't have text on it. So we gotta put this text using codes. So let's go ahead and double click on our form. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you, let's create a message box. So message box, user uh, data base one, the data set, dot users, which is our table name, dot rows, dot count. So this line of codes means count how many rows are there in our table at the data one data set all right so let's just go ahead and debug this and it, it tells me there is three rows in our table so this is the first row second row and the third row but index number starts from zero so it, the index number of these rows are zero one and two so as you can see index number is always less than the count also this edit code uh, the edit column index number is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So all these buttons, cell number is 4. Alright? So let's go ahead and make a uh, for loop. So for i equals 0, 2. Let's cut this part and let's delete the message box. Alright, and next. So now, as I told you before, that index number is always less than the count, so we got minus 1 to the count. Now we can use this i as our index number. Alright, let's type data create view 1 dot rows, and we're gonna put i there as our index number dot cell, and we're gonna use those edit buttons. So the index number of that edit button is 4, so cell 4 dot value is equals to edit let's go ahead and debug this so as you can see this button has now text on it which says edit great now let's go ahead and double click on our data grid view all right so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to put here the button and here let's comment edit button so that we know which one is our delete and edit button. So, all right. So next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this part, and paste it there, and I'm gonna change the three to four because our index number for our uh, edit button is four. So okay, and then we're gonna say message box e dot row index. All right. So let's just debug this. And here, if I click on the first, it's gonna say zero because the index number of that first row, which is this one, first row is zero, and this should be three, or two, yeah, because zero, one, two. But the problem is, user cannot really edit these cells right now because in our previous tutorial, we made the read-only property of that data grid view to be true. Let me just show you. If you go here and click on this little icon, and as you can see, any more editing is false. That's mean we only know to true. So we have to somehow fix that. So first, let me just leave that a message box because we don't need it right now. So let's put data create view one dot read only equals false, and that's gonna put the enable editing to true. So let's just debug this. 
And if you click on edit now, as you can see, user can actually edit this um, rows. But the problem is now that user can actually edit other rows also, which we don't really want. So we need to fix that somehow. So to fix that, let's go ahead and make a for loop. So for i equals 0, let's just copy this. Do, let's paste that, and next to between the loop, we're gonna now define an if statement. And we're gonna say if the i is equals to e dot row index, then so we basically say when the loop is going on, we're checking the value of i is equals to the row we're clicking on, then it's gonna put that to read only to true or false. So data with v1 dot rows and i you can say i because we have already checked the i we have already filtered the i with e dot row index so now we can say i dot read only is equals to true false and else we can say other rows make other rows to true so let's put that true all right now let's debug Alright, so when we're clicking on edit, now we can actually edit the row we are clicking on, but we cannot edit other rows, so great. So next what I want, I want to change the back color of this row we are selecting. So data read view, one, dot rows, and in parentheses I, so the row we are selecting, dot default cell style, dot back color is equals color, dot let's put yellow okay let's copy this and paste it in the else section and let's change this to white all right so let's debug this so now when the user click on the edit button the row is selecting as yellow right and all other rows are uh, white right let's close that actually we don't need that because it's gonna change to white anyway so let's go ahead and taste it one more time. So now we can actually edit the row we are selecting on. And we cannot edit other rows also. So great. Alright, so let's move on to our new objective. Uh, so next what I want, when the user click on the edit button, it should change to finish editing button. The way we can do that, we're not going to replace the home button. But instead of that, we're just going to change the text property of that button. So let's create that. So data read v1 dot rows i dot cells of that button which is 4 dot value is equals to finish editing. Okay, let's just go ahead and debug. And now if I click on edit, as you can see, it's changing to finish editing. But normally finish editing do not change to edit when I click on it. So we need to fix that. So the way we're gonna fix that, we're gonna create an if statement. We're gonna say if let's copy this, the value of that is equals to edit, but only when change to finish editing. Yeah. And else if it's not the edit, then change to uh, finish editing. Then change to finish uh, edit. Okay. Now let's debug again. Okay, now click on edit, it's changing to finish editing, and when you click on the finish editing, it's changing to edit. Perfect. Oh, the only thing is the color of that thing we have to change. So the editing is working. So we need to just copy this, paste it there, and change the yellow to white. Alright, let's debug this, and now as you can see, if I click on edit, it's changing the color to yellow. And if I click on finish editing, it's changing the color to white. Great, but our code is not really complete, so it's not going to work with the multiple selection as you can see here. If I click on finish editing now, uh, we cannot really add the selected row, but we can actually edit our previously selected row, which we really don't want. So we need to fix that problem. So why don't you, I'm going to finish editing now and close this box. So to fix this problem, let's just copy this line, paste it there, and let's just copy 
this line and paste it there. Alright, so let's just debug this now. And now if I click on edit, we can edit the single selection, right? With the multiple selection, it should also work, yeah. But only problem is there that we can still edit our previous selector draw, which we don't really want. So we need to fix that, so let's just close that. And to fix that, it's a simple thing that just copy this line and put that in another else statement also. Okay, now if I debug this, Okay, so if I click on edit, let's put multiple selection and click on, okay, now we cannot edit. So now it's working just as we want it. Great, so let me test a bit so that there is no bug in there. Great. Okay, let's finish editing and we cannot edit. We can only edit the selected draw now. So, okay, let's just close that. And everything is working, so we can now move on to our query. Alright, so let's go ahead and right click on our user table adapter and add a query. Okay, use a skill statement next, and this time we're gonna use update. And next, okay, so for this query it says update users, which is our table, and set username column equals p1, password column to p2 where the ID is P3, alright, so there is three values we have to put there, okay, next, so, update query, the name, okay, finish, so, this update query has been added to our user adapter tape adapter, so great, let's just go ahead and put that in our group, so, when you click on the finish editing, which is here, I'm gonna add that um, user table adapter, so, users uh, table adapter1, Dot, we're gonna use that update query. So update query, and when we use parentheses, as you can see, p1 as string. And this p1 is our username. So let's just copy this line and paste it there. Alright, so the degree p were 1, cell 4. So instead of 4, we're gonna use 1. Why? Uh, let me just show you. Just cut this, and let's just debug again. So the cell number for the username is going to be 0, 1. Now for the password it's going to be uh, 2. And for the ID it's going to be 0, okay? So let's just paste it again. Let's just tap this. Okay, so for the username it's going to be 1. And let's copy this and paste it over there. And for the password it was 2. And for the ID it was 0. Okay. But there is some errors coming. Okay, sorry about that. I can't forget to uh, convert that to a value. So dot value for this one. But the password dot value. This one dot value. All right. So now it should update that query also. So let's uh, click on edit now. And let's put uh, admin to admin2, finish editing, let's close that, and let's debug again. And as you can see, the value has been updated, great. So let's put Tom2 with the multiple selection, and let's change this to 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this one to, uh, let's put 0, 0, 0, and let's finish editing all of them. Alright, so let's just close that and debug again. Alright, so as you can see, all those values has been changed actually in our table. So yeah, um, this is how you work with the update query. Hope you liked this tutorial guys. If you did, just give it a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, just comment below and I will promise to answer it back. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. And make sure you click on the subscribe button and don't forget to share with your friends, families and Facebook. And make sure you click on this little bell icon that's gonna send you a message whenever I make videos in future.